So today I'm going to be working on a Toshiba RT150S, which supposedly has various different problems. Before I'm going to open this thing up, I'm going to try the all the functions a little bit. Um, a lot of times these old units, they need belts and they need their heads cleaned and the movable rubber parts cleaned, the cap stand cleaned. Um, oftentimes the pots are dirty, the switches are dirty, these things are used, or at least they used to be used outdoors a lot. They used to have to take a lot of abuse. I've seen one with uh, breakages in the housing, all, basically all kinds of stuff. Um, it's not like your home equipment that might be nicely taken care of, although I've seen some really bad units there before too. People have spilled uh, beer in them and stuff like that in, in amplifiers and receivers. So um, let's go ahead and try the cassette. Okay, that's halfway turned up. That's way too quiet. No, the pot's dirty. So try the. We'll try the radio next. So we'll try the radio next. Same thing, same thing here, it's, uh, it's almost halfway turned up, but we, but we barely got anything coming out. So that tells me that's a problem, most likely a problem could be uh, in the circuitry which handles both the cassette, um, cassette input and the um, radio. Well, actually, when I would say it's a problem that's... Um, common to both of these different uh, functions. You know, sometimes the cassette will be working and the radio will be out, or um, the radio will be working and the cassette will be out, something like that. That could also happen too. But that's kind of telling me uh, to take a good look at these uh, controls. I know this is noisy, so we'll go ahead and open this thing up. So in order to open this thing up, I have to use a Phillips uh, screwdriver, a really long one, because you see See how far this, I don't know, it can be seen right there how far this uh, actually goes down into that thing. So, luckily I have one of these. So once we remove the screws, in order to separate everything, we should open the compartment here because there's a latch back here. Um, and we won't be able to separate that. It looks like this thing will be in the way. How about these? Not sure about these. No, they can stay on. Okay, got a slight hang up somewhere, but it's uh, coming apart. So after removing a total of seven screws, good thing. Good thing is they're all the same size. I hate it when they're all different sizes. Or rather, I've seen some before where it had like three different size. They use three different sizes, like in to open the thing up. So, safe and sound for now. So here's the inside um, cassette mechanism. I'm pointing out with my fingers, speakers, the power supplies back there, and all the the little power amp section here, and the tone controls, everything are up there. I don't know how difficult it would be to get that out. And this looks like really dirty here. I don't know if I can focus on that. So first thing I'm going to do is get all the dirt out there and clean as much as possible. So we're making progress here. When we activate the controls, we can see any parts need lubrication. Or we can check out where the manufacturer put grease, like there, there, for example. There's a couple spots. And if the grease is hardened, we should be able to see that pretty easily. Um, this grease seems to be still good, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it there rather than make a big mess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take the cassette mechanism out now. So the mechanism just comes out with three screws, one up here, two on the sides. Um, and they're the same size as the 
housing screws, so that's great. So it looks like to get the rest of the mechanism out, we also need to remove some connectors here. And these things only go in one way. So next I remove the main circuit board. I want to be able to get to this uh, real scratchy pot right there. Um, so I can go ahead and get that out. And that just um, pops out, but you have to be pretty careful though. So now that we have the main board out, I can get to the pots much easier. I see I can easily spray down in these two, but this one I'm not sure about. It seems to be sealed. I can't really tell, but I'll have to spray a little bit down there anyways and then go ahead and see what happens. So just to recap what I did so far, I sprayed all of the put in geometers. I sprayed all of the switches here and also you have to do this record playback switch. Same thing, you can spray in there. Of course you do everything with the power off and then just basically you can work this back and forth while you're doing that. And of course same thing with uh, these here, with these put in geometers like here the volume control I'm turning you spray in there if you can find an opening. I wasn't sure so uh, whether it's had an opening on the other side so what I did is I turned it up so I could get some here where the shaft sticks out and let it slope and let it soak in there and turn at the same time and I could see the fluid going in and uh, I knew it was taking it up and now it sounds a lot uh, better. There's only a little bit of noise left whether I'm not sure whether now if that's from the um, potentiometer or maybe I have a capacitor that is um, leaking but it is getting better basically by the minute so we have this lever here which I wasn't sure how it went on well I, it only took me a couple seconds to figure this out that's why it's good anyways to take a lot of uh, pictures even though this couldn't have been avoided I think it fell out when I pull the cassette me mechanism off or something. Um, I know for exact, see this tab right here, <clears throat> that has to push against here, and that's what activates that. So this is now in the right place, I think. And this down here, what I'm pointing out with my chopstick here, this is how the antenna makes contact. That's everything that's gotta be lined up, and then what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and take the main circuit board just go ahead and, and push it back down into the tabs. So then we just make sure everything is in place and we carefully press down and we should hear some kind of a um, noise once it locks into place. And I think that was it right there. Also all I do is double check everything. The, the main thing was that I really looked at everything first, make sure everything lined up and then went ahead and pushed so I don't break anything. So earlier we still had some noise when I moved the use the volume control and now you can see it's all gone so I guess I got lucky with that. Sometimes the um, carbon tracks are actually worn so bad I mean there's nothing basically nothing you can do um, but in this case, I got lucky, which I'm basically glad, and I didn't have to pull the potentiometer out, which is also great. Um, so that took care of all of that. Now I just have to take a look at the cassette mechanism. So I got the cassette mechanism hooked up. I put the connectors back on. Of course, you're here the one with the thicker red, uh, black, and orange white is for the power to the cassette mechanism and of course over here to the right we have this little shielded cable with these thin wires that's of course that's the for the audio signal so we'll see how the cassette sounds now before it was um, 
not sounding too good. I got it out of the uh, unit and I've got it resting on a book. So let me go ahead and... Uh, seems to be working okay so far. So we want to go ahead and clean the head, which is my next little... Uh, for this, I've got isopropyl alcohol, and I'm just going to wet the swab, and then I'll go ahead and just clean like that. Preferably in a left to right direction. Once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, magnifier to make sure I, little magnifying glass, to make sure I got everything here. Although you don't want any like uh, impacted uh, tape residue on here. If it's a little bit harder, we could always use a toothpick to scrape it off, but of course you can't use metal or something like that. Now the cap stand here, which I'm touching here, there's two of them here, and of course those should be cleaned with alcohol too which I already did. So, and as far as the pinch roller, it doesn't seem to be really worn. It has some glaze on it. Of course, I could replace it. But I don't know if it makes sense with this unit since uh, I don't think I'm going to keep this unit. It's not in as perfect shape externally as uh, I would have wanted. So, um, I do have replacement uh, pressure rollers, pinch rollers here which I got from somewhere years ago. Um, I think they came from China. Of course, I could replace it or I could go ahead and um, use what I've been using as a pointer here, which I have some fine sandpaper on there and try to remove that um, glaze. I think I might go ahead and uh, take a shot at that. So in case you're wondering how did I get this uh, this clean, I used my old chopstick which I taped some sandpaper to. This is fine grit sandpaper, wet and dry sandpaper. And then I put a little bit of alcohol here on the sandpaper, the isopropyl alcohol. And then I just rested it on here. And then I just got to make sure I'm absolutely straight. And just go ahead and let that take it off and you can see so far it's uh, actually let me shut this off actually do an okay job I mean compared to how it was before I'll do a little bit longer and then I'll do the other side so what about the belts um, this belt here is a little bit hardened um, to get the belts out there's four screws one right here one behind here, one up to the left here, and then one down at the bottom left, I believe. Then we should be able to get the mechanism out. But what I like to do first, I always take a couple of pictures of everything. So I know how to put things together, even when I'm working on them. Because I've had instances where I had to stop work on something for a week, two weeks, even more. And then go ahead and try to figure out if you pulled, say, a mechanism apart, how to put that back together. So... That's really a big part of repairing these. So let me go ahead and um, take those four screws out. And these are just Phillips head screws. So we have everything exposed now. We can see the flywheels. Another important thing is belt travel. You have to make sure you know how they go back on. Sometimes it can be a puzzle. So what I'm going to do is take another picture. Or you can draw it and um, then go from there. So as far as the belt is concerned, uh, this only uses one belt and of course the camera is in the way. I normally don't like doing this with the camera there. This is just in case somebody needs to get, wants to know what size belt um, it is about. It's about a, the diameter is about 74 millimeters and the actually this is a square belt 
and this is a square belt too. Um, I noticed this one's the original one, the one that's hardened is a little bit thicker than the other one. I don't think it'll make much difference, be better than nothing. Uh, this one seems to be right over a millimeter or so. It could be maybe 1.1, 1.2 millimeters. And this one is seems to be right around a millimeter. So that's going to have to do though. So I'll go ahead and uh, put this in because I don't think I have any other ones. So we put the back plate on. We make sure everything is uh, lined up basically. So now this job is now finished. I'm not sure whether I'm going to go ahead and do any extra videos where I do some electrical adjustments um, or mechanical adjustments. Just with the circuit board, if you pull it out, it, you'll hear it snap into place. And if you look at the back, you see the connectors lined up right and they'll be flush with the housing. And also you have to watch out when with these speakers here, um, the tweeters here these super cheap tweeters are connected to the woofers there and if, if they fall out too hard they might rip the rip the wire here and um, where it attaches to the tweeter then you might have another problem on your hands so anyways thanks for your patience and thanks for watching